All right, let's do a set real quick. Let's see who we get. Q should be fast too, which is kind of an interesting part about being uh, this. Okay, we got card, Shia LaPuff, that's funny. So, in my opinion, I don't like Fountain. Some people like Fountain in this matchup. I'm not terribly a big fan of Falco versus Jigglypuff on Fountain. I feel like it messes with your lasers. Um, some of the side platform heights will prevent you from being able to threaten Puff effectively when she's on the ledge or in the corner. So, I prefer to take that off, and Dreamland is kind of the obvious one. She lives for a very long time. She also still kills you at low percent. So, I like taking those things off. Um, Pokemon Stadium and Battlefield. Battlefield's generally pretty good. You have a lot of space to laser. Um, we're just gonna start off trying to establish laser control when you're when you're like on the opposite side of the stage as puff It's generally a good idea to try and use your projectiles so that you can actually build some damage and kind of Incentivize the puff to move forward Because um, puff um, gets zoned kind of hard. I would say um, Especially at kind of like a lower and mid-level where they can't be as precise um, You know up tilt and back air are, are pretty difficult things for them to be able to deal with um, I'll, I'll probably get a little bit more into that, but that's just sort of the idea, is that I'm using these lasers while we're far apart, build some damage, um, and an another added benefit of doing this, I literally have a video on it, um, is that when you laser them out of the air, uh, you actually turn them around. So when you turn them around out of the air, uh, they can't threaten you with back air, which is obviously a huge tool, right? Um, it's, it's generally like the thing people complain about Jigglypuff for, right? Well, I guess there's a few other things, but um, yeah, with her fair and her nair, her, her essentially her two front, front facing things, those two things are the things that get walled out really hard, right? So when I talk about like zoning puff with your disjoints like back air and up tilt, um, I mostly mean uh, doing the uh, back air and up tilt against puff facing forward. Now, as you saw, I did a down throw there. Um, down throw is kind of cheesy. There's a there's a couple things you can do off of that. I wouldn't necessarily suggest it, especially if you're just starting off in the matchup. I would likely suggest an up throw. If those lasers hit, I'll try to show you. You can actually combo um, up throw up air, similar to how Fox would do it, but. Um, a little bit weirder. We're gonna wait till Puff lands on the ground and go for it. Yeah, exactly like that. So, the way I like to think about the matchup, um, again, especially at a mid level, because things get a little complicated at high level, I'm gonna try not to go into that too much, um, is that once she lands, like an alarm goes off in my head. And that's like the moment I can be a bit aggressive. When she's in the air, she's very difficult to contest. Um, moving forward. Like if you try to move forward into her and she's in the air, um, those situations can get real dicey. Um, also, just something to note is that down air is a really effective tool for comboing Jigglypuff, um, but only essentially when uh, she gets knocked down by the down air, which I believe is 31% is the percent that you kind of want to look, look for. So before then, you kind of go for your stray hits, you go for your drifted aerials. Um, so here we're going to go for late down air grab into down throw, turn around, up tilt, into maybe one more aerial. Yeah, perfect. So we got 41%. You see how we have that damage, and then I go for the down air, and we got hit by get up attack, but like, what's Puff gonna do off of it, right? We bounce her up, hit her with that. So again, her landing on the ground has now become like a pretty huge risk. Um, she's at 96%, up throw, up air probably will kill. Um, yeah, just sort of threatening her on the side platform, chasing when she's at like, uh, a disadvantage, um, I am actually going to take off Fountain just because I don't feel like it's a very instructive stage to deal with. There's too many, like, situations that are never going to come up elsewhere in the matchup. Um, also, just because I'm doing Stream of Consciousness, it'll probably make me complain a bit. So we're going to go to Dreamland, which is totally fine with me. Um, we're going to do two of the similar lasers that I did last time, kind of protecting the top platform. Oh, see how that was a perfect example of how it's hard to move into Jigglypuff when she's in the air. I just did an approaching laser, right? Nothing too serious, but they just did a forward air, and it just kind of clips your head. Um, it, it aligns really nicely for the puff for them to be able to tack on damage. And one thing that I, that I don't think people put enough emphasis on is protecting your percent um, when you're at low percent. Um, by the way, up throw down air will start killing around 90% if you can get them off stage with it. Um, but yeah, now that I'm at this percent, life is so much scarier because at zero, even up throw rest won't kill. Like from center stage or maybe even near the edge of the stage if I DI well on Dreamland. So being at zero, you have that luxury. On top of that, pound isn't gonna knock over. Um, on top of that, up air's not gonna knock over. Um, so making sure that you protect yourself and don't just give Puff free hits when you're at low percent is a huge part of the matchup. 
Um, see, she landed, and then I immediately go in. You see how, like, I'm sort of biding my time using the lasers, turning her around, right? We're, we're playing this game. She goes onto the ground, and I move in, right? And we sort of protect ourselves. We do this. She's on the ground. We move in. Went for back throw, down air. Probably don't do that, by the way. Yep, down air is a, as a combo tool. That's not quite going to kill. We threaten with lasers. Can't really, like, edge guard her or anything in this position. Just sort of shark. They're just drifting forward, so you can get this hit right here. Um... Yeah, I, I feel like that was a very impatient thing. Um, you generally won't get puffs that are exclusively drifting forward. That full hop nair is a great example of why it's difficult to move into puff with that height. Your mohawk just gets completely clipped, especially when you're trying to move in with most short hop aerials. Um, what I start to showcase here is that short hop forward air is actually one of the main ways that you can deal with that, and sometimes you can actually get it to combo into other things. Uh, as you see, Puff lands, I go immediately aggressive, uh, unfortunately they hold out to the left there, so they just kind of explode. Um, here I'm just trying to protect myself into the corner, look for that drift in Nair and get a nice whiff punish with a laser grab, moving to the top platform, but you have to be careful when you're at this percent because up air is going to knock you down, and unfortunately I get rested. Here we can do a down air up tilt, and then that puts Jigglypuff back at the down air knockdown percent, so you'll see me go for a lot of down air knockdowns. We're not too concerned with being above Puff here because uh, we are actually under the percent where it's going to knock down, so we're not afraid of getting up air arrested. Got to be a little careful with how we chase Puff in the air. And uh, Jigglypuff jump squat actually avoiding Falco's jab has become more and more of a thing recently. All right, just wait until they hit the ground. Again, going for some nice pressure. They roll out. Excellent backflip back air here. What do we got? No real way to contest Puff to kill her. Going for a full hop back air, definitely pretty risky, especially now we're at that knockdown percent from the up air, so we really don't want to do committal full hop aerials, which is why you see me kind of dig myself into the corner and uh, and hold my ground in that spot. Uh, looking for a laser up smash in this it's spot. with the nair, bud. Oh, no, I, I see how I didn't turn them around, so I let them come in with the back air, and I can't contest that nearly as easily. It's also a little less telegraphed. But we can also just kind of look for stray hits. Again, I got to the front side of Jigglypuff there, so the only thing that they could really threaten me with were those low disjointed moves. Um, or I guess I just say, like, less disjointed moves, like forward air and there. Do a back air and kind of seal the game out. Hopefully that was instructive, informative, helpful. So yeah, let's see how many points I got for that. Oh, like 85. <laughs> Lots of lasers? Yeah, I think laser is an important part of the matchup. Because again, like, how sick is it? Every other character in the game has to deal with Puff with her back turned, and they just don't get to do anything about it. They're like, well, I guess I gotta deal with back air. And you can be like, well, I'm going to position my laser at the height that I think you're gonna try to back air, and then the only way for them to turn themselves around in the air is to do another double jump, which takes time and puts them back into a position that they don't want to be in. Um, and then you can you can a little you can interact with them in a, a bit more advantageous of a way. What's the spacing for the top platform side B edge cancel? That's an interesting question. Um, so the way I always look at it is um, you see how this battlefield platform? Um, where's the camera zoom? Yeah, you see how the battlefield platform has these like you see the purple like. Uh, it's, is that a rhombus or something? It's not the actual platform, but the things coming off the sides, like that goes from like here to here. You guys see this thing in the background, right? Well, it's also on the front side. So you see how it, it just sort of uh, bends out here? Yeah, a little trapezoid. You see how it bends out? So you go to this edge of the thing that's bent out, and then it just works. That's how I always think about it, is I go to here, right? Go to here and you can also like i could jump from here and then drift to the point but that is that's like what i'm lining myself up with horizontally um it's a it you can just imagine that these things exist on dreamland too like you go to that position of the platform on dreamland and then it's the it's the same thing so i just sort of imagine like okay about that spacing of the thing and um, there's no like actual thing i line myself up with on the ground or whatever to do it here um, I just assume, like, that little amount of the platform. It's kind of hard with Wispy, of course. But yeah, I imagine that that's there on uh, on Dreamland. Um, on Yoshi's, it's actually pretty far back. It's just, like, barely away from the ledge. Um, you can think about it, like, one step in from the ledge, essentially. Can, can I actually just do it if I go to the ledge? Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah, I guess you can just think about it, like, right at the ledge. Um, 
Yeah, I think it'll also work if you're one step in, you you do it without. Yeah, yeah, you can also do it one step in, which is kind of how I thought about it, just like slightly here. But I, I usually don't do it on uh, on this stage because people can just like, uh, like for example, if you're Fox, right? I generally don't do it on Yoshi's just because if they're on the ground, and let's say that like your side B edge canceling from over here, right? You, you're the Falco and you chose to do this or whatever, and you're the Fox that just dropped down from the Halo pad, they just boom. Bam! And then, like, fuck. Now I don't have a jump. Now I'm getting comboed. Like, it's just all bad. Um, and then Fountain, I, I almost never do it on, actually. But it is, um, it's also pretty close to the ledge. It's not on, like, the inside part of the platform. It's like, uh, you can think about it like this little tuft of grass here. Um, yeah, you can think about it right on this, like, tuft of grass. I'm too high, by the way, which is why that one's not working. Of course, I'm fucking missing it. That's funny. Yeah, I'm just, I'm messing up the height of it, not the actual horizontal spacing. There you go. Boom! Wayland on the side platform. Yeah, here's the thing is, once you get a feel for, like, the actual spacing of it, you can, you can just, like, do it out of, like, of course I fucking did that. You can just do it out of, like, uh, just moving around. Um, kind of hard when this is the only thing I'm trying to do. I'm not, like, moving around and then doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you sort of just get a feel for where that spot is, and, like, you kind of line yourself up with it almost, like, subconsciously after a certain period of time, but, yeah. How do you do with Falcons that always laser your approach and uses lasers to always get an opening? Um, okay. I really should just make a video about this. Essentially, here's a really important thing that I don't think most people think about, right? I'll, I'll actually open up Uncle Punch really quick. Um, just to explain this. So, uh, one thing I want to show real quick, right, is like, uh, so Falco is lasering your approach. Like, here you can't even actually hit him, right? Okay, so, let me just record this real quick, and hopefully this will get to the core of, um, of the issue, right? So if we set up this recording, we just set up Falco to do this, right? He just shot two lasers back to back. Um, we're gonna control the computer. So we do this, he's gonna shoot the two lasers, and like, if we try to approach, sorry, we try to approach, uh, oh, he shot the second laser low. Like, we just can't get in there, right? Like, uh, gonna try to up smash, uh, I, I can't even almost get there. And even if I try to do this, right, I'm, I'm getting out. Like, I can't get to him, right? Um, so, in this matchup, you have to fight for laser control. Hopefully, by the way, you're asking about Falco Dittos, because this is very Falco Dittos specific. Um, but something people don't think about is laser out of shield. So, um, if, if you actually just laser out a shield, you can regain laser control. Now, you can't do this, uh, probably. Yeah, I, I don't think I can get a laser out that will actually hit him if I get hit by this laser, right? Because I want to actually time this laser low. Like, here's me shielding it, and I actually hit him with the laser. Um, yeah, so, an important thing to note is that you can just shield the laser, not even power shield the laser, right? Because power shielding is good and all. Uh, of course, I'm never gonna hit one, that's exciting. Can I even power shield this height? I bet I can. It's hard. I'm bad at power shielding. What the? Okay, whatever. Obviously, power shielding is good, but a big thing that a lot of people don't pay attention to in Falco Dittos is that if you just shield the laser, you reduce the amount of stun that you take from the laser by like five or six frames. I can't exactly remember what it is right now. Um, so that allows you to laser out of shield. So like, your, your whole thing is like, you want to approach, well, it'd be really helpful if you had the laser control, and so it looks like this, where you get the laser out, and then you can approach, right? But yeah, so uh, learning to laser out a shield gives you the laser advantage, they're in disadvantage, then that gives you the opportunity to approach, right? So shielding lasers, um, and then once you've established the control, you get it back. Those are the moments where like you actually have the opportunity to, uh, to do good approaches. I'm actually missing my dash on a lot of these, which is funny. Um, but yeah, so I would focus on shielding lasers and then moving out of shield. So many characters, like for example, Falcon. So I should I should be controlling this. Yeah, so like Falcon. Falcon has a, a really, has a lot of incentive to like dash out of the laser. My controller's so fucked. You see how far away I am from the Falco now? So if the Falco chooses to like do this laser into laser and then approaching aerial or something, I'm gone. Oh, what the? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. But even from here, actually, I can get very far. 
Oh, it's just one laser now. I fucked up the recording. But Falco does not have that same luxury. Falco's much more about holding his ground in the matchup. Um, you want to play with your verticality. You want to go to platforms a lot of the time. Um, and you also want to shield your lasers, hold your position. Um, doing things like dash back or like take laser dash forward. These things definitely have their place, but it's not the same. You want to shield the laser, take less stun. And then what other characters don't have is laser out of shield. So you full screen, if they're like zoning you and laser camping or whatever, you shield the laser, take the laser control back, then you can approach. That's sort of how I think about it. <laughs> Should we go into this too? Okay, one thing I'll show just really quick is um, I talk about this all the time. I'm surprised maybe you haven't heard me talk about this. So Fox is full hop. Everybody talks about how it's crazy. Look at its threat range. I could go here and I could go here. Now this is fucked. There's like this edge of the stage and this edge of the stage that I can't hit, right? Wow, that's crazy. Now I'm going to fully drift out of shield. That's as far as I can go. That's as far as I can go. So now we're here to here. So what you do as Falco is you have this spacing set up. You fucking shoot the laser at him. They shield, jump out of shield. The only universe you have to live in is the universe just outside of that range, which like you shoot the laser and then you just go like this. Or you shoot the laser, then you shoot a backflip laser, right? Uh, this is Fox, I'll have a much harder time doing the backflip laser, but yeah. So then you just position right outside of that. Then they full hop drift in, boom, laser grab. Or you do short hop drift forward. Uh, just actually go Falco now that you've seen the threat ranges. So you could do a sequence like, um, you know, like this, right? And then you're at a very safe range. Uh or even that laser. Or, um, yeah, you could do the shield pivot too, even to, to get out of out of the range. Um, another one is that you could um, laser and then do this down air on top of them as they're falling, which is really good. You could, uh, you could laser dash back dash attack them. Like I said, laser grab, um, laser just dash back, dash in, grab, like, punishing them for full hopping there is, uh, is really good and important. But it's mostly all about the landing. Wave dash back shine. I don't like wave dash back shine, and the back here is also kind of weird. So, well, okay, I shouldn't say that I don't like wave dash back shine. It has its spots, but with punishing Fox full hop, um, to me feels um, like a much harder read than doing any of the other things. Um, yeah. Uh, Lil Rabies. I've actually heard that this person's pretty good. Um, I think I've played them maybe once on my main account. So against Fox, um, I think we maybe have played against one Fox um on this account before but i'm probably gonna take off fountain dreams um i'm probably gonna take off dreamland we're either gonna end up on yoshi's or battlefield is generally how this ends up playing out um if they're here maybe they take off okay cool yep so we're gonna end up on either yoshi's or battlefield um hopefully that's what i said i think it maybe said yoshi's or dreamland because i'm a fool but anyway, um, in this matchup, it's very dynamic. You sort of have to pay attention to what the fox is going for, attempt to control the pace of the match, use good lasers. Um, I'm gonna look for some grabs at low percents, try to set up as many edge guards as possible, this kind of thing, but it's gonna be very dynamic. I can't just tell you like, this is the one thing you do against fox. Um, so we'll see how it plays out. We have Battlefield, I'm gonna do a drop down laser here. And again, we're gonna be looking for grabs, late aerials, shines, maybe chasing on platforms a little bit, kind of in a safe way. Ooh, I maybe could have killed them there. So tournament winner gets punished by me standing on the side platform. They double jump out of that combo. Ooh, great example. Nice, and I really like forward throw after 37%, by the way, for those of you that know me. You probably know that I have talked about that a lot. Um, I feel a little bad for this person. They don't know. Maybe they do know they're getting smurfed on. I I don't really know, but um, it's fine. We're gonna crouch cancel, and you see how I got double hit there. Um, to my knowledge, you have to hold down forward in order to get that hit. Oh, nice up tilt. That was very very good. Uh, but I had a really good example on the first dock of punishing that kind of um, lazy full hop with the the no dash momentum. Shield drop maybe? No, not quite. Nice, we got that. We got a tech here. Okay, they missed the reaction. We're gonna go to the ledge, rising down here from the ledge because they were caught really close and they were messing up. Oh, there's that. Okay, so that's one layer. You guys are seeing these full hops. I was just uh, criticizing these when I was going over it. Boom. Um, so those full hops, I'm gonna try to look to punish, but you have to keep in mind when there's a top platform, they can full hop and then just um, double jump to the top platform. 
But generally, even if you do something pretty safe, like laser laser or something to look to pressure that, um, them going to top platform isn't like the biggest detriment in the world, you know? Um, life, life will just go on. So we're gonna keep teching here, got sharked a little bit, get knocked into the corner. One thing I can say that is not like any uh, player specific thing is that you should really look to avoid being in the corner as much as possible against Fox. Um, it is a terrifying position to be in the corner. Um, you literally could just die off of a stray hit, which um, a lot of people talk about Falco being a glass cannon, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't love actually being a glass cannon because i feel like there are a lot of ways falco can defend himself but in the corner you are definitely at the mercy of fox sometimes um okay just whiff punish him falling there get a nice little read with the empty land tech chase here reaction tech chase again get the reverse hit of the forward smash laser laser we are gonna drop low hit them with this oh i tried to tech chase again but i did not have my hand positioned correctly I DI'd the up throw to get a slide off. I attempted to do it twice for you guys, but I didn't quite get it. Gonna do a get up attack here. Okay, I missed both my techs, which is kind of silly. Gonna go for a kind of a silly slide off. Um, this is something I talked about in the last Falco match that we had, or the Fox match that we had on this account, which is that you need to make sure that you're protecting yourself when you're on the side platform against Fox, because their full hop is such a nice height for them to attack you at. So. Uh, a lot of foxes are baited into doing things like dash nair directly at you on the side platform. But if you're ready to defend yourself, shield drop shine, shield drop back air, um, those sorts of things. Um, even maybe fall on top of them by jumping or something like that or defending yourself with short hop down air on the platform. Um, if you're ready to protect yourself, it's really bad for Fox to do it. So here I'm gonna shoot a high laser that's either gonna catch a full hop or um, punish them for power shielding. We caught the full hop. Okay, so there's probably gonna be a lot of full hops on this stage. You might actually see me just stand still and beat some of them with, um, what's it called, up tilt. I, I do that a little bit less than I used to, but um, I think against this player, it does seem like they're pretty full hop happy. Uh, we're just gonna tech to the side here. I definitely could have uh, comboed off that forward throw in a way that uh, would have killed them, but that's totally fine. I did not respond to the double jump very well because I was too busy talking to react. Ooh, nice. Oh, they had me. Nice, that'll also kill. So this is totally fine. Um, I'm probably gonna read a roll here with a wave dash back shine. Okay, they actually just double jumped. I am seeing things on my other screen. Approaching laser, ooh, they're doing some take laser stuff, which is nice to see. But you see we called out the uh, the take laser dash back with approaching laser. It's kind of one of my favorite ways to do it, although um, it doesn't come without risk. Um, okay, okay, we're gonna full hop forward, drift back. That's a mango classic. He actually caught my jump squat there. Falco has kind of slow jump squat in comparison to some other characters. That was a crazy tech chase. We're gonna do early side B because we're trolling. Uh, let's see, cover the full hop, yeah. Okay, single hit up air because they're at a percent where down air is gonna knock down. Got a nicely drifted back air there. Power shield this up B, not quite. Okay, the ledge dashes don't look perfect, so I might uh, go a little bit harder next time on attempting to punish the ledge. Yeah, you see how I drift in back air there? Boom, and I double jumped right above them, was able to cover the uh, tournament winner. We're just gonna shine this. Back air, they have no jump, so we're gonna laser them down as far as we can here. Uh-huh, and then we're gonna shine. Back air, boom, that steals the stock. So they're port one, so we actually wanted to run to the left side of the stage, but didn't notice it in time. See how they're full hopping? You can cover that with those high lasers. They full hopped and I didn't quite double jump at the right spacing again. Okay, we got a little laser running shine action. Double shine to cover the crouch um, slash pop up. Ooh, it looks like they definitely are trying to do a bit more take laser stuff now, which is good to see. Uh, okay, they're, they're moving a little bit, but that doesn't mean that we can't just call out some of the movement. We're gonna forward smash here. It's gonna reverse cover the double jump with the lasers. Nice, it kind of messed up their movement. Just gonna cover this with a forward smash. Ooh, they actually hit the ledge dash, which is really nice. See how I stood out of the range of that full hop and just punished? That, uh, that is uh, definitely something you wanna look to do. We're gonna high laser again. Yeah, that shine is something classic. You can actually punish that with a down air that I tried to show, but the situation was very slightly different. Okay, we're just gonna keep boxing them into the corner with these lasers, because they're uh, not approaching off of any of the take laser stuff, so they're appears to be no threat that I actually have to worry about. Again, I'm just gonna go hard on boxing them into the corner since it doesn't seem like their ledge dashes are nearly clean enough to deal with Falco back air. 
We're just gonna try to pressure them again. Yeah, yeah, this seems to be a, a weak point, right? So we can kind of just take advantage of that and put them in the corner. If Fox doesn't have really, really good ledge dashes, laser forward tilt, laser grabs, and back airs um, at, a, at a pretty decent spacing, but sometimes you can get a little greedy with your, your drift and stuff like that, can be really effective tools to just keep Fox uh, in the corner. What's the most efficient way to get used to Melee's movement system? I feel like my hands won't move according to what my brain wants. Yes, I use Uncle Punch. Um, I actually don't even know if Uncle Punch matters too much for this. Um, they have like a little wave dash thing where you can like adjust your wave dash angles um, and like try to fit yourself in the little boxes they set out for you and stuff, which can be nice, right? Like here I am adjusting my wave, la wave dash lengths. Um, but yeah, I actually think that um, some deliberate movement training of just like one thing at a time, right? Like if you want to like wave land onto a platform or shine wave land onto a platform. This took me, uh, I had to sit down. I was 2014. I had to, I had to like do this. I never, like I would, I would pop somebody up right here. I would like shine and I would just like shine bear every time. It took me a while to actually like get the movement down of like, okay, jump. I hold down or I jump down, then I'm holding down, and then I press jump again, then R. Like, this is something I just had to sit and do for like 30 minutes. And then now, of course, I can, you know, do all the craziest shit in the world. You know, all the turnarounds and the you know, wild laser and this, wee, all the edge cancels in the world. My controller misses the shield drops. Um, but yeah, I would just take it one step at a time, right? Uh, and then you, I think you can slowly kind of just build on top of, uh, what you learn, like here's dashing, right? And me adjusting my dash lengths. Um, and then here's me adding wave dashes in to uh, my dashes. Then I'm gonna adjust my wave dash lengths on top of my wave dashes. Then here's me, I'm gonna shine wave land inside of all this, right? I'll do some shine wave lands in the middle of my movement. It's like, okay, we do this, just regular wave land. Then a fast fall, right? Maybe a shield drop aerial. And like, okay, you get all this stuff and uh, Eventually you can piece it all together, but I, I know it seems like a lot at first But yeah, I'd literally practice like dash dancing and learning the range because if you don't know the range of your dash dance Like you'll you'll enter run and like shit will get really sloppy But like learning exactly how long you can dash dance for and then tightening that um, One like movement thing that you can do is like moving to each side of the stage by doing this, right? Like this is a useful thing to learn, and then wave dashing uh, backwards across the stage. It was weird that I turned around, actually. Wave dashing backwards across the stage, um, wave dashing forward across the stage. All these things are really, really useful. Like just little, little, uh, like I don't mean to. This is a weird phrase to use, but like execution tests that you can give yourself. Like, okay, well, can I roll to the ledge and then wave dash across the stage, um, you know, five times in a row without full hopping or something, right? Like. There's a bunch of stuff. But I don't think you need, like, some sort of instructive thing. Like, Uncle Punch, like, ooh, like, wave dash here. Like, uh, I think you just, like, experiment, move around the stages, um, practice wave landing, practice wave dashing. Um, if you don't know how to literally execute any of these things, um, if you don't know how to execute them, then, like, you know, ask me or ask a friend or ask your local community or something. Um, or look up a guide online. There's probably something online. Um, that will literally like tell you how to do it, and then you can just sit down and, and build it into your hands. It's kind of how it would work. What do you think about claw grip? I think it's real good, but apparently it's not good for your hands. Um, yeah, I don't really know. All right, we got another puff, big coyotes. Um, I already kind of explained my thought process about the stages. We're gonna take off Dreamland first because some puffs actually don't like Fountain. Um, yeah, so we're gonna take off Fountain. We're gonna end up back on Battlefield. Um, and we'll see what happens. I'm actually gonna go a little bit more aggressive at the start just to maybe show how this could go. We're gonna attack the side platform. Okay, we're gonna grab them as soon as they get low. Just keep it safe with the, uh, the aerials here. So again, I like fighting when I am at low percent. So down throw forward smash. Uh, I really don't wanna get into it too much because I don't have the time. Gonna side the edge cancel on the top platform. That was really scary. I actually got baited into that situation right there. Okay. Let's see here. Yep, timed the down air well enough with Puff being short enough to where that was fine for us. Up air might kill. Yep, I got the DI mix up. You saw how I drifted to the left side of them there. Okay, we're not gonna do the edge cancel this time. Yep, so they hit the ground and that's when I like to go aggressive. Okay, it does seem like they're maybe uh, preferring the ground a little bit. Um, 
which is not great for them to be doing in general. That's not going to kill, but that's totally fine. Laser, laser on their way down. They hit the ground. They are really slow at getting back up, so we're going to do this. I can't charge the down smash because they're actually going to end up too high. He didn't do his recovery correctly, I don't believe, but that's fine. Okay, we're going to go to ledge. Puff actually has a pretty hard time dealing with ledge dash in a meaningful way. Um... Ooh, I tried to CC shine that, cover the roll, didn't quite get it. We're going to hold down and slide off the back air. It's very important that you're looking to slide off tough aerials. Um, people always think of slide off against Marth. Or I guess I should say, like, the common way of thinking about it is that you can slide off Marth combos, but um, it is really, really important against other characters as well, and I would say that Puff is one of the most important characters uh, to do that with. Yeah, just got them with a little down air as they were coming up. You can just essentially get some safe reads at that position. It could be good. Um, Yeah, I'm going to take off Fountain again. We're probably going to go to Dreamland. I actually don't know if this person is a Puff player. They might actually switch characters. Um, so we're going to see. Uh, the, uh, yeah, the only reason I think this person might not be a Puff player, I just noticed some, some like potentially bad habits. Playing a little too grounded, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we're trying to cover them jumping, got to the front side of them there, made it so I could uh, threaten them as they drop. Again, they're on the ground, so I'm, I'm going aggressive as soon as I see them on the ground. Whoa, that was crazy. We're just going to full hop out of the corner. Definitely a very useful tool, especially on a stage like this one, where you can uh, just jump to the top platform, trying to turn around with lasers. Again, we're defending ourselves. Okay, kind of let them get some free damage. They went for Tomahawk Grab, but it was too slow, even if they had actually gotten it. Uh, we're going to cover them going high. They use too many jumps. Definitely have to be a lot more careful with their drift and recovery. We are going to edge cancel on the top platform. This time they try to cover me uh, just sliding off to the other side, but I didn't get baited by that. I do not recommend doing anything I just did right there. Lasering the top platform. Going to threaten with back air here. Didn't quite get it. Yeah, the drift away nair. They're trying to be very safe with how they're um, poking at me. Going to down angled forward tilt right there, which is outside of the shield grab spacing. Go to the side platform to do the lasers since they full hopped. That didn't quite work out. Maybe a side B here? I tried to side B, but nothing happened, which is totally fine. Okay. Gonna down air on top of them. That didn't quite work. Got the roll shine um, on their air dodge, which was a little silly. I don't think that true combo, but that's totally fine. And we're gonna go to... Oh. <laughs> I spent so much time explaining that, I didn't go to the ledge, actually. I was like, we're gonna go to the ledge. <laughs> and I didn't quite go to the ledge. Okay, yeah, you see how this Puff's like dash dancing and stuff? I, I really... The thing is, I think that Puff wave dash is actually quite threatening. Um, but Puff dash dance and just like stationary shielding um, is in general is like not very scary. Oh, I thought I could have shined before that grab actually happened, which is totally fine. Side B from the ledge. Um, occasionally that could be a little difficult for Puff to deal with if they're not ready for it. We're going to forward smash ledge here. Oh my god, my laser barely missed. Yeah, at these lower percents, you can look to defend yourself out of the drill a little bit because it's very difficult slash impossible for them to combo. Uh, nah, it's probably not impossible for them to combo. We're going to go to ledge here, side B from the ledge again. I should probably be showing you guys some of the ledge dash interactions that could be happening. A little unfortunate that I'm, I'm being a little lazy just because I, I could definitely... Uh, I could have just liked shit up there. Um, sorry, I was just thinking about that a little bit. Ooh, nice uh, punish, but fortunately for me, I'm at a high enough percent where I end up on the top platform. Looking to go in with late aerials. Late aerials against Puff on the ground. Very good. You see that how that backflip protected me from the uh, forward smash, which was good. I actually don't have that specific notch on my controller, which is a little funny. And I go for uh, just some back airs in the corner here. Oh, I didn't space myself well enough. There's actually a, a very key spacing you want to avoid that just came up, which is... Um, Doing a spaced back air such that you end up in a position where your shine will miss, but Puff's grab will hit. Um, you definitely don't want to be in that spot. I, I would also suggest here, a lot of people might exclusively go for down tilt. I'm trying to show how it's really hard to hit, and on top of that, maybe I even get punished for it. Let's, let's see if we can get him to grab us. Yeah, so down tilt can just be punished uh, by by grab if you space it incorrectly. I just wanted to show that because I figured the game would be over if it happened. But yeah, so one thing is that you get Puff to high percent and people will think like, oh, Falco has down tilt to kill Puff. But in all reality, the risk reward in general, even when you have a lead, is not worth it. Um, I guess that big of a lead, maybe. Um, but yeah, the, there are other ways of killing Puff that are a lot safer. The up there up air I showed you guys, up there down air that I was doing a few times, back airing to zone them and kill them at higher percents, um, down throw, up smash and forward smash could be some cheesy ways to kill Puff. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I knew the game would be over if I got killed for doing the down tilt, so I just figured I'd do it. Um, can you shine turn around down air when the down smash won't work? Um, you can, but they're, it's very scary because Puff can mix up uh, pound timings and you can get hit. Because um, Puff can pound to the ledge um, or at the ledge, and they can linger a hitbox at the ledge um, at that height, and they can input a tech during their pound... And then if it hits you, you die. And then uh, if you hit them, they tech. So that can happen. Um, and it depends. They might be like too far out for you to realistically do that. Um, you can do like an invincible rising bear um, or rising downer, depending on how close they are to the stage. And that could be something that is like kind of risk free that I might suggest that you do. Um, but in all reality, there doesn't seem to be some guaranteed way to, to kill Puff in that spot. Okay, so against Link, I do not like Fountain of Dreams. I feel like uh, Link really benefits um, from having the lower top platform being able to threaten full hop-up air. Um, also, just being able to get some cheese going. I was trying to think of how to kind of word it in a nice way. I like both of these stages in the matchup. Um, I usually just start Battlefield. So, the big thing about this matchup in general is that you want to kind of prevent them from getting bombs we're going to defend ourselves here yeah that doesn't actually combo with that percent so you want to prevent them from getting getting bombs and you want to approach with uh mid high aerials so mid high aerials what the hell um we're just going to shine the bomb back i know this seems troll but shine the bomb back i'll do it more throughout the set i'm sure um is actually an effective strategy so here they're going to hook shot so we're going to back air them um, you probably shouldn't do that. It's it's kind of a risk, but I, I knew that they were going to do it because we took their jump. Oh, that was actually a good bomb throw. I wasn't sure if they would react to that that well. You never want to position yourself above um, Link like that. In general, it's just not very good. Um, yep, so Link can attack very quickly from the ledge with um, forward air or up air. So you do have to be careful about that happening. Yeah, see these forward airs? See how I approach with a high aerial? So the reason why you want to approach with these high aerials is that you get a lot of value for hitting them. And then on top of that, um, Link's out of shield options are uh, slow enough to where he can't actually punish you for, for having done those things. So we're just gonna do some aerials. You see how I just like shine early aerial and he's just too slow to do anything about it? Yep. So um, just to make it really clear, like you do not want to do like fade back Nair or fade back auto cancel back air to like remain safe. This matchup is all about getting in and staying in. Um, in general, what will happen is that uh, Lynx will start rolling, and then once you... Oh, sorry, didn't drop through the platform. So once you start rolling, they'll actually... Um, you see how, like, Link really can't do much about that? Once they start rolling, you can start, like, reading the rolls and punishing, which I was hoping I'd get one right there. Yeah, so Bomb Pull has some lag as well. Oh. Yeah, this is totally fine. Tried to catch the bomb, didn't quite work out. We're gonna power shield. Oh, we did it slow. I wanted a power shield down smash the forward air from the ledge. I'm getting a little silly with it now. Oh, you see how I did something like quote unquote safe in most matchups and I got grabbed for it? Like laser forward tilt is way less effective too. Um, so in general, I just don't like edge guarding Link here. I think that he's he's really bad in the corner position. Um, the double jump out is kind of tricky, I guess, but um, all in all, it's still gonna get them uh, punished most of the time. Just gonna high laser here, just punish them on the platform. But yeah, these uh these like quote unquote safe things like auto cancel back your fade away or like laser forward tilt or you know fade back nair or something in your shield pressure or shine wave dash back, right? Those things um all just get beat by shield grab and and a lot of them get beat by um up yet a shield as well. Yeah, so we SDI'd that such that we were gonna get hit by it. Yeah, so that uh, you you don't really in general want to go to the side platform to threaten Link. Uh, it does do a good job of uh, taking care of the forward air from ledge, but it does leave you vulnerable to um, does leave you vulnerable to what's it called up air from the ledge. So if you saw even in that last interaction, all I did was laser approaching Nair shine Nair. It's like this this sort of thing is really 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 hard for uh, Link to deal with. And it, it's, it almost seems counterintuitive to a lot of Falco matchups. Oh, okay, so we have Peach, which is interesting. So we have Peach on Dreamland, um, which is totally fine. We hit them out of their float. We're gonna threaten them here. I didn't expect the turnip pull, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm just shining back the turnip. Um, 
a la bombs, which is kind of funny. You probably shouldn't do that. Gotta go for a punish after the forward throw. Didn't quite work out. I knew they weren't at the knockdown percent, but I actually messed up my tech skill. I could have punished them before the uh, land cancel. Um, corner pressuring is very important against Peach. Yep. So we're gonna laser grab here. Didn't quite work out. Take laser dash backing as Peach, which can occasionally be good. Um, they don't have a float and they're on the ledge. You want to pay attention to how many resources they have left. Um, in general, it's very, very important. Yep. Got the shield down. Oh wow, my lasers missed, which shouldn't matter too much. Yeah, so we have them at a percent where a lot of things are going to be killing. We're just going to set up some lasers, uh, maybe just get a straight aerial. Yeah, they're trying to move as if they are not a Peach player, which is interesting. Um, just late Nair here. Maybe they're going to go for a Power Shield Down Smash at some point. Uh, late aerials will just beat that. So, I uh, can't say that's going to go terribly amazing for them. We're just going to side B from ledge. Uh, just because I want to be a little lazy. And if Peach isn't, like, specifically looking to punish it, it can be hard for them to deal with. This person's trying to do a lot of dash back, like Power Shield missing every time. Oh, jumped into that. A little unfortunate. Um, Peach has some, like, kind of cheesy big hitboxes in, in spots like that. Um, they're kind of big risks to do, but, yeah. Okay, they're just sitting in the floats. Totally fine. Yeah, they're power shielding a lot of attacks. I, I feel like they, they believe that's going to give them more value than it actually does. Got a forward air here. Maybe forward smash the jump forward. No, they just floated out of it. Gonna laser forward tilt. Laser here to catch the float. Forward tilt to catch the up B. Now we're gonna punish them for going on stage. If they go to ledge, we're just gonna continue our corner pressure. Okay, they still have no float, no jump, so we're gonna hit them with a back air. Now they're high enough up. Yeah, they should have upbeat way sooner, because uh, now they're out of spacing where I can actually threaten them. Yeah, they, they could have actually made it back to like center stage and had some uh, drift mix-ups without me being able to hit them there. Okay, this should be fine, I think. Yeah, just barely. Back air, up tilt, if they're gonna get greedy. This person always floats out of combos, um, which is actually something I could take advantage of. Yep, oh, that was supposed to be a dash jump downer. The dash didn't happen, the jump didn't happen, the downer didn't happen, which is interesting. Okay, so I believe this person is gonna go, oh, I thought they were gonna go back to ledge, but they actually, they canceled it too high, so I, I kinda got the opportunity to notice that. Yeah, so that's not gonna kill, that's not gonna kill. We drift back, which is hard for them to deal with. Back air here, uh, I might go for like a shine grab. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing I haven't done and one thing I also haven't mentioned is that uh, grabbing is very hard for uh, Peach to deal with in the corner and uh, a lot of Peaches are just very incentivized to shield. So you can take advantage of Peach in the corner, not necessarily just by spacing aerials and doing pressure, but also um, just, uh, I don't know what this person's doing. Turning around like that also lets me uh, get that shield poke. I just wanted to kind of show that real quick. The back leg of both Samus, I mean a lot of characters, most characters, but specifically Peach and Samus, um, allows you to get these nice uh, shield pokes, um, even if their shield health is high. So we're gonna cover them. They have no double jump, but they like to float out of things. Maybe they also floated, I did not notice. Okay, they're trying to get a little bit more aggressive with these dash attacks, not quite gonna work. They still have their double jump, so we're gonna cover the double jump forward. I'm actually gonna laser them out of this here. I couldn't punish that um, reliably because Wispy was blowing towards the uh, uh, beginning of that up B. So they are too low, they're gonna have to burn their double jump. Oh, I thought they were just air dodge. This person does not play necessarily like a Peach player, which is kind of funny. But anyway, yeah, I think I showed some decent stuff in the matchup. Um, I definitely could have had a bit more control, but I just chose to participate in some mix-ups. But a lot of the, the stuff is just corner pressure and making sure that they never get back to a comfortable position. Um, I think it's pretty important. Use tap jump to get out of shine when you hold it for a while, like against Link Bomb. Yeah, I do. When do you choose to use single hit up air and fast followers instead of shine to extend pillars? Um, well, instead of shine, I would do it when they're too high up. So like, for example, so let's say that I do like an up tilt shine just randomly and maybe I catch them at a full hop. Maybe I whiff punish them with the up tilt or something. Here, I'm not just gonna shine again. Because if I do shine again, they're going to be way too high for me to do anything. Right? Like that, I, I really can't do anything outside of like up air or shine bear. Um, but if I do this, this, and then uh, 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 uh. Or I could do uh, 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 and then uh, oh. Sorry, I want to show this whole combo. So it would be like this, 
into this, and then a forward smash, which you would hope would send them in the right direction. But essentially, when they're at that height. Now, this height also generally aligns with the percent I would also do that. You see how they're at 42 after this up tilt shine? So, um, if you try to down air them here, they get knocked down, and then your fucking combo is over unless you read them correctly. Um, so, this is why at this percent and height, I would. Um, me attempting an up tilt that's crazy um that's why i would choose to to do these right and at th these heights it doesn't really work anymore but the training dummy obviously isn't doing anything i meant uh instead of dare not shine oh well yeah i answered that part of it too it's just a percent thing um at that point because like if i shine them here and they're at that same height right they're at the same height where i was kind of showing um, I would definitely down air at this at this height. How do you up tilt consistently? You know, I just talked about this in a recent stream, but like, I think that just going from like standing and then up tilting can be pretty hard a lot of the time. Uh, Cause you just have to like slowly move your stick up and tilt after doing a wave dash or a wave shine. Yeah, so the way to do this is that during the wave dash or wave shine, just to show you, my stick is held up right now. So what you do is you buffer the the up input, um, and if you press it early enough, right, like after a wave dash, I'm, I'm holding up again right now, all you have to do is press A. So you don't have to like wave dash, then like hit the tilt. Um, so like, yeah, down tilt, turn around, up tilt, or down air, turn around, up tilt, or like this, or you know, like a wave shine even. Um, you know, it's because I, I'm wave shine and then I, I'm holding up as I come over here. And it makes it super easy, because all I need to do is the, the A press. Um, I say super easy. The the hold up part, you have to do soon enough, because if you do it too late, you're going to full hop, right? So um, I'm pretty sure there's like a four frame buffer window to, to jump. So you need to do it before your wave dash lag is over and four frames before. But um, as long as you do it like during the lag of a down air, again, I'm holding up. I'm just buffering the up input. So it doesn't have to be precise, right? Yeah, the, the, I'm just holding all the way up. I'm just holding full up, completely up. As, as high up as up will go. King Claymore. Okay, we have uh, Falcon versus Fox. I was trying to recognize the tag and I was like, oh, I'm plat, right? I will probably get uh, up against some people that I don't know. So I actually prefer, remember last time we had either Yoshi's or, uh, or Battlefield this time, we actually get the option of going either Pokemon Stadium or Battlefield, which I feel like are Falco's two best stages against Fox, especially Frozen Stadium. Um, there's a bunch of reasons for that, which I can describe later if you guys want, but um, yeah, we're gonna do drop down laser here. They might jump at us. They don't jump at us, which allows us to take some space, punish the uh, get up attack there, just try to react in that situation. Didn't quite get a reaction tech chase. I do an OS right there to actually get that up smash. Back air here. We have a shine back here set up right there. Didn't quite have to do it. We're gonna full hop and then we're just gonna drift backwards here. Full hop, laser, laser, jump, shine, laser, laser. Didn't quite get the second laser. They don't have a double jump and they're at a low enough percent to where the down air will just kill them. Getting a lot of kind of easy openings against this fox. Yeah, you could tell after the, uh, b before the laser actually even hit them that they were looking to do an up tilt. So I figured they would just spam another one out. And so I actually got a nice uh, whiff punish timing on their second up tilt. Yeah, they're doing a lot of aerial up tilt. Yeah, okay. So I, I actually could be punishing that quite a bit better even just on a startup. We're gonna go for a little bit of a fancy combo just for fun. And down air, boom. Yeah, they should have started their up higher. In no universe do you really ever want to be up being below the stage when you could be up being above the stage. At least against Falco. I I'm not even necessarily sure um, with other characters. We're going to take off Fountain of Dreams. Again, I don't believe it to be really that instructive of a stage. Um, we're going to short hop laser fast fall laser to begin this uh, right here. Just because I think we can take the space. I didn't mean to tech roll to the right, and it got me punished, which is a little sad, but that's fine. Um, he land canceled right there. Nice double jump sweet spot. We're going to punish that same double jump sweet spot. See how so many players, especially at the mid-level, are really incentivized to do things that just worked. Um, so they're just like, oh, well, that works. So, I mean, like, I guess they, they just don't cover that. But as long as you're paying attention to the layers, um, you can actually get big damage for recognizing people's habits. Nice. Didn't quite cover that there. Yeah, they're probably looking for an up throw, up smash. I actually botched the angle, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, I would not suggest dropping down right away, but I, I feel like this person's kind of having a hard time. We're going to go for a grab here. They're shielding a ton. Yeah. There. Uh, 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 uh. Didn't quite work out there. Miss ledge dash. That's unfortunate. Hopefully they don't give up. 
Nice, we're gonna come down with a sneaky laser. Oh my goodness, that was kind of crazy. Okay, we're gonna laser here, cover the jump to the side platform. They don't do it, they're shielding a lot again. Yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm fighting, if I was like fighting a, a really good player there, I essentially would have just thrown my stock away, which is totally fun. Um, seems like they actually have some decent tech skill out of like their their back air, their double shine, stuff like that. So I, I bet that corner pressure is like a huge part of their gameplay. Um, if, I, if we actually played like a best of five set or we played a little bit longer, um, I could definitely see that being a point that I'd specifically try to avoid, but I was, I was sort of just going ham towards the end, which isn't necessarily an informative way to play, but uh, it was how I was feeling. <laughs> yeah, I can explain the up smash OS. Yeah, let me, uh, I'm gonna go to Uncle Punch for it since we're, we're done with that account. Anyway, so the up smash OS. In this position, right? Um, regular get up and get up attack are really extremely double omega hard to react to, just purely. I could show you guys, you can trust me, just trust me on this. Otherwise, you can look at the animations yourself. They are so fucking similar, it's insane. Specifically, with Falco and Fox on their back. So, <clears throat> what you can do is an up smash. It's funny that I'm actually getting hit by the second uh, part, but I did an up smash out of shield there. I attempted one. So, oh, I went to the other side of him, that's silly. So um, what you could do is you can do an up smash that would have hit them if they uh, if they do a regular get up, but then if they do get up attack, you are locked into shield stun, so it does nothing. I'm getting trolled by this a little bit because his spacing is slightly different all the time. Yeah, so what I do is I input it twice. Yeah, like that. So that's that's the that's the OS. So, and then again, yeah. So if I show the tech option or the get up option, stand, right. So then I'm just gonna hit him. But I would have been. This is so silly that he's like SDI. But yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it's just that the shield stun locks you into the first one, uh, or or locks you out of actually up smashing during the first one but then you can just up smash them right afterwards. You can do the same thing with shield grab, by the way. You can uh, you can grab the regular getup, or you can grab the getup attack. You just have to input it twice. And you have to time it, you know, as if you're imagining it's a it's a getup attack, um, or, or a regular getup, sorry. I don't know, can you guys hear that I'm inputting it twice? I'm getting trolled. Yeah. So again, and, and the thing is you can react to the fact of whether or not it hit if they do, you don't have to input it twice like if this happens, right? Oh, I did away. Right? I, I, don't, I don't have to input it twice. I do that all the time actually. 